let's take the next few minutes and go over everything you need to know when taking one of our rugged teardrops like Dorothy out for an adventure. Secured to the front storage basket is a five day cooler. The six gallon water container comes filled with filtered water. Inside the cap, you'll find the dispenser. Just take it apart and screw it onto the outside. Tighten the cap back on and give the nozzle a little twist to make sure it's pointed the right direction. The container can be unstrapped, placed anywhere you like for dispensing. Be sure to re-secure the container before you travel again. This silver key is used to unlock this front storage bin. Inside the bin are all kinds of things to use on your adventure. First of which would be the 30 amp shoreline cord for using to plug in the trailer should you be at a campground with full hookups. Also in there is an adapter from the 30 amp plug to a regular 15 amp plug. The bright yellow end is the trailer side, 30 amp twist lock connector. Align the pins and twist the connector into place. Black collar tightens to keep everything secure. A number of leveling blocks are provided for use when leveling the trailer side to side. Should you only be using one, place it behind or in front of the tire pull the trailer up into place. Should you need to use multiple, make yourself a little ramp. They all stick together. Bubble levels can be found on the passenger side corner. In addition to the large black rubber wheel chocks, a second set of folding wheel chocks are inside this bin, should you need to use them. The tires were filled with air at the time of your departure. Should you want to check, there's a tire gauge inside here as well. If you're planning on separating the trailer from the tow vehicle, we ask that you use this additional hitch lock. Keys provided on the ring that was given to you. Remove the hitch pin lock with the key also on the ring so that you can place this secondary lock into position. Attach the yellow portion just as you would if you were attaching the trailer to your tow vehicle. Ratchet the U-bolt into place. Now everything's secure. Be sure to replace the hitch pin lock also for added security and so it doesn't go missing. A rubber mallet is provided in this container as well. Also, this bag contains the stakes for the rooftop tent should you be using it. The mallet can be used to drive the stakes, but also has a hook to help you pull them out. The purple key on the ring unlocks both the handle and the deadbolt of the door. There's a catch attached to the body to hold the door open so that it doesn't swing and hit anything. Inside the cab of the trailer, linens can be provided should you want. Two sleeping bags for use inside or in the tent. A queen sleeping set with fitted sheet and comforter. Also a bag with four pillows. The 
mattress inside the cab is folded in half for travel. Whenever you're ready, just unfold it and push it into place. This mattress protector should stay on at all times. Inside these upper cabinets you'll find a throw blanket, a small first aid kit, a waterproof Bluetooth speaker, which will be charged when you pick up. Also in this box is a set of charging cords for all the rechargeable items in the trailer. Fire extinguisher is also in this cabinet. There's also a spare twin size comforter inside here. This black panel houses the 110 volt breakers and the 12 volt fuses. There's only the four. These others are intentionally left open. Should there be a problem, you'll see a red light next to the blown fuse. The ceiling is equipped with a vented fan, which is somewhat blocked by the rooftop tent. It'll open most of the way and you'll feel it get tough. The push button is how you operate this fan. The interior of the trailer is also has LED lighting, as well as small reading lights. The inside of the trailer also has 12 volt sockets and USB outlets, as well as 110 outlets. It's important to note that without being plugged into a shoreline power, the 110 outlets of the trailer will not operate. The blackout curtains are held up by Velcro and can be rolled down on either side. There's also a set of outlets located underneath the cabinets should you need these. In the cabinet you should also find a small solar panel which is used for trickle charging the battery. There's a pigtail connection hanging from the battery box which it can be connected to. Place the panel in any sunny location that the cord will let you you should get about 5 watts of charge. There's LED lighting on the exterior of the trailer as well. The gray key on the ring unlocks the rear storage compartment. Should you be taking one of our pet friendly trailers, like Dorothy here, you'll find a couple of dog bowls inside, as well as a step ladder used for when you're opening and closing the rooftop tent. There's a very aggressive mat for use while you're at camp, as well as a boot tray. A Coleman propane two burner stove is also provided for you. This gray piece of countertop is meant to be mounted to the side of the trailer, here. This silver channel, the holes align. You can use the pin to lock it in place. There's also an extra support, which can be raised here. Just be careful, because it's a finger pincher. Release the lever when you're going to lower and remove the countertop. This is the most likely time that it pinches. A folding camp kitchen with a little trash bag and a little water basin is also provided inside. This tan bag contains the window poles for the rooftop tent. This large bag has the annex for the rooftop tent, 
in the boot storage bag. There's also a folding table in here for you to set up at camp. The first of the three storage bins is left empty on purpose for you to pack any kind of items you'd like. The second tub has all sorts of camp items. A four and a half pound propane tank and a connection hose for the two burner stove. Coffee percolator, some paper products, sponges, cleaning wipes, a lighter, some dish soap, and a little handheld broom and dustpan. The third bin is full of all sorts of kitchen items. There are two expandable wash basins, some pot holders, some cleaning rags, some dish towels, this blue zippered pouch, houses an assortment of kitchen tools, as well as the knives, forks, and spoons. There's a set of four plates, bowls, and coffee mugs. The stainless steel cooking set comes with a frying pan, a universal handle, which snaps in place like this. This frying pan is also intended to be used as the lid for the stock pot. Three other size pots come with this universal lid. Inside the rear storage compartment, there's another 110 outlet, as well as a 12 volt socket and USB ports. In the back here, the USB ports also serve as the voltmeter for you to keep an eye on the battery level. There's an LED light, as well as a motion light on the door here, which is stuck with a magnetic strip. It has an on position and off position, as well as G, which stands for motion. Coming up, I'm going to show you how to open and use the rooftop tent. The three critical items you need will be the step stool, the large bag with the annex and boot bag inside, and the tan bag with the window poles. First step is to remove the road cover, which starts with undoing these Velcro straps on the driver's side. Pull the now free straps off the passenger side and just lay them on top or let them dangle. On the driver's side there's these two Velcro straps that should be undone but always want to be redone. Just make sure they're loose before you try and pull this off. This is where the step stool comes in handy. Once that Velcro is removed, I was just talking about, push the zipper as far as you can across the top of the trailer. Either have your buddy or walk around to the other side. Grab the zipper and pass it around. Passing the zipper by the corners is easiest if the leather cover is rolled up. Once it's free on three sides, lift the leather cover off of the corners. Be sure it also clears the rooftop tent ladder. This silver pole should be free and is used when putting the porch in shortly. The top of the tire can also be used to get up there and grab what you need. Once the road cover is completely free, it can be rolled up and secured with the straps on the back of the tent. Or it can be removed completely. 
sliding this blue end out of the channel. If you're going to use the added annex room, the road cover has to be removed like this. There is one Velcro strap on either side, holding the rooftop tent closed. Slide the ladder into its open and locked position. You'll hear a click when it gets to the end. When the ladder's locked, first pull down to get the tent partway open. Then use the ladder to lower the tent into position. These black knobs are what are used to lock and unlock the ladder. Here's that porch pole I said you'd need in a minute. The inside of this large flap has some reinforced seams that you can find up in the corner. They're right there. Press this pole into the porch and then secure the other end in this spot provided on the tent. Make sure you do one side at a time or have a buddy to help you. This porch covers the entrance to the tent. It has two guy wires, which can help hold it in place once you're at camp. Undo the toggles when you're ready to insert the window poles. The straight end of the window pole is inserted through the canvas of the tent through these access spots into the hole drilled in the frame. Place the hooked end through the eyelet of the window covering and give the window pole a little bend to secure it in place. They're intended to bend so that they keep the window cover secure. Repeat this step for the other window pole. Should you be planning on using the optional annex room, wait to do this other side of window pole, as it's in the way when you're trying to zip the annex on. There is a second entrance door on the opposite side of the trailer, which the rain fly is typically covering when it's toggled down. Two of the provided window poles can be used to prop this rain cover up to give you a little extra ventilation maybe see the view out of this side. Just like with the window coverings, there's an access port through the tent so you can get the tent pole into the frame. These also need a little bend to hold it in place. The boot bag can be hung in the channel near the entrance to the tent. That way you have somewhere to store your boots. You don't have to climb the ladder with bare feet. There are multiple attachment points for a lantern or anything else you should need to hang from the tent. When you first open the tent, you'll notice that there's four elastic bands across. These are only used to help the sides fold up when the tent is stowed. Feel free to undo them, stow them in one of the containers. Although it's called a boot bag, it works for shoes also. There are two black straps attached to the frame of the tent with loops near the door. These are intended to help you climb in should you need something to hold on to. There's also mounting spots inside the tent for lanterns or anything else you should need to hang.
both side windows, as well as the roof vents open up to screens. If the ladder's in your way, it can be slid over the top of the trailer like this. If you're gonna install the optional annex room, it's best to latch the ladder in its up position like this. Unfold the annex room and floor and locate the one blue side. The rib sewn into this blue side is inserted into this channel on the tent, the one where you remove the road cover from. It tends to snag a little here on the corner, potentially on the roof rack bars. Should you need to separate the tent a tiny bit, you can do so. It's also extremely helpful to have a second person pull the tension off of it while you slide it through the channel. Pull this end all the way through until it lines up on both sides. The other three sides of the annex room are zippered into place. The zipper itself stays on the tent. Pass this zipper all the way around all three sides. Remember when I said that window pole would be in the way of the zipper? Apparently I forgot, but it worked out because I could show you. Make sure this is removed. You can zip the annex all the way through. There's an access in the annex room as well. D-rings on the corners should be staked into the ground to give your annex room as much space as possible. There is still some access through this door into the trailer. Just be careful because the tent can get pinched pretty easy. At the back of the annex room is a large zippered panel which allows you access through the back also. The windows on the annex, as well as the door, also have screens. There's a cover on the inside and the outside, which can be rolled up and out of the way. When removing the window poles, remember I said they need a little bend. Make sure that once they're out, everything is toggled back down. The easiest way to remove this porch pole is to push it up against the tent and lift it out of the way. Once you've replaced the elastic inside, you're ready to fold the tent. Ensure the ladder's locked and push it up to about 90 degrees. Then use the ladder to fold it into position. Once all the odds and ends are tucked in, the porch pole can be placed on top and then the porch itself also. The leather road cover is pretty forgiving, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Just tucked out of the way so nothing gets caught in the zipper. One Velcro strap on either side keeps the tent closed.
If you removed the road cover completely or used the annex, slide it back in using the blue ribbed portion right now. Again, this is easier if there's two of you. Give the road cover a toss up and over the tent as best we could. Make sure the back corners are all the way in place before placing the front two. Work the road cover down over both corners. When zipping, just like unzipping, it's best to roll the leather corners up out of the way. Once it's all zipped up, toss the two straps back over, secure them with the Velcro on the driver's side of the tent. A hitch pin lock is provided and the keys on the ring. This is the only hitch pin that is provided so make sure any time the vehicle is attached to the trailer, this pin is in place. When preparing to connect to the vehicle, release the latch and put the lever in the up position. It's always easiest to have somebody guide you into position. When things are all lined up, you're ready to lower the trailer. The crank on the jack is how you raise and lower. This video is sped up for you. I'm not actually that fast. Once the weight of the trailer is on the tow vehicle, you can lower the latch. Continue to raise the jack all the way off the ground. The silver pin and the clip are how you stow this jack. Remove the pin and rotate the foot towards the body. Realign these holes and put this pin back. Make sure to also put the cotter pin back in. The two safety chains can be attached to the hitch in either manner which you like. One on either side, crisscrossed. The breakaway brake cable should be attached to the hitch separate from the chains. All our trailers have a seven pin RV style connection for the lights. Make sure that it's seated in the plug and the cap is holding it in place. Now's the time to remove those wheel chocks. And now you're ready to go.